Okay, today I'm here to show you how to make lobster mac and cheese. Now there's a lot of lobster mac and cheese out there, but this one is a particularly decadent version that uh, will, is sure to impress your date. Now the first thing we're gonna do is melt two tablespoons of butter over medium heat. Next we'll stir in one cup of finely chopped or minced onion. And what we're gonna do is sweat this. Now if you've, if you've taken any of my uh, courses uh, on uh, cook, learning to cook like a pro, you already know about sweating. If you haven't taken them, sweating basically is means to uh, remove the moisture from the uh, vegetable, whatever it happens to be. This is onions. So to sweat them, you cook them on medium heat uh, until they become translucent. You might start to see some steam coming off. Uh, once that steam starts to go away, uh, they're, they're, they're sweated, they're ready to go to the next step. This is gonna take about three to four minutes on medium heat to sweat these onions. Okay, it's been about three or four minutes. The vegetables or the onions are nice and soft and translucent. You wanna stop this cooking, this sweating, before they start to brown. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to add the milk, which is six cups of milk. Stir it up. We want to bring that to a boil. Now, now we, we want to just bring it to a boil. So just when we start to get some bubbles, uh, big bubbles, we're going to reduce the heat and simmer it. So I'm turning the heat up to medium high. Okay, we're just about, it's just starting to get some big bubbles. I'm going to reduce the heat to low or even as low as it can go. And we're going to simmer it for 20 minutes. Now, simmering means that there's no boiling. Uh, it's just uh, steam's coming off of it. It's just cooking along at a low temperature. If you start to notice that there are any, any bubbles like it's boiling, turn the heat down. All right, now we're gonna let this simmer for 20 minutes. Now while the onions are steeping in the milk, we're going to make a white roux. Now a roux is always a combination of fat, which is often butter, it could be oil, and flour, usually in equal proportions. So today, we're making a roux with a quarter of a cup of um, of, um, uh, butter and a quarter of a cup of all-purpose flour. We're going to turn that on to um, low heat to start because the butter is not yet melted. If you start with melted butter, uh, you can start with a little bit higher temperature of the um, uh, on the stove. Now we're going to stir this up. Do not stop stirring it. We're making a white roux. White roux means that it hasn't taken on any color. There's also a, a blonde roux and a, a dark roux. We're making a white roux, which uh, is the first step in making a roux. Those others, the blonde and the dark, they, they, they cook longer. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix the flour and the butter together and cook them, really only for a few minutes. And that makes a white roux. And if you see any lumps, you wanna try to stir those out of there. Make sure you get down into the corners of the pan so that there's no, nothing that burns in the corners. So we'll cook this for about mm, three minutes, three or four minutes, stirring it almost constantly. Okay, it's been about three minutes. Um, the point of cooking it uh, for a couple minutes is to cook off, out the raw flour taste. Now what we're gonna do is turn off the heat and just keep this in a warm place until we have that uh, milk ready to add to it. All right, now we're gonna pour this milk into the roux slowly. And we're, we're not gonna put it all in there because we wanna get a good consistency to this, uh, uh, to this sauce. We don't want it to be too thick, we don't want it to be too thin, okay? Now it's thickening up as we put the milk in. So I'm gonna put in all but about, oh, about a quarter of this milk. I'm gonna hold that aside. If the, uh, if the sauce gets a nice consistency with that much, then we won't put any more in. Now what we're making here is a bechamel sauce, which is one of the basic sauces of French cooking. Bechamel is basically just flour, butter, milk, and onions. I've seen some recipes out there for bechamel that have cheese in them. If you add cheese to bechamel, it's Mornay sauce. It's not bechamel sauce. We're making a bechamel today. Now we will be using this bechamel to make the lobster mac and cheese, which has cheese in it. Uh, but we're not gonna, what we're not, we're, what we're doing is we're making a bechamel and then we're gonna be adding cheese to make the final dish. We're not actually making a Mornay sauce. 
Now this um, sauce will get silkier as it cooks. And we're gonna cook it for probably uh, maybe, oh, about five minutes, stirring it, whisking it. Okay, we've been cooking and stirring for about three or four minutes. Uh, I like the consistency. It's um, slightly thick, not too thin, still soupy. So I'm not gonna add any more of that milk, all right? Now we're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna add some salt. How much salt? Add enough to taste what you like, okay? And we're also, uh, and that's kosher salt, by the way. We're also going to add a little touch of white pepper. Now, a lot of um, recipes for bechamel call for black pepper. I don't use black pepper because it leaves little black specks in the sauce. So I use white pepper, but don't use too much. White pepper goes a long way. Also, at this stage in making a, um, a bechamel, you normally, a classic bechamel, you would strain it to get all of those onions out of there. Uh, you can either strain it after you have um, uh, cook them in the milk, in other words, just strain the milk, or you can strain the whole thing after you've put the milk into the uh, roux. Uh, but since we're going to be using this bechamel in the lobster mac and cheese, I'm going to keep those onions in there. If I was going to be using this sauce for some other purpose, I might um, strain those onions out. Now we also want to add a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg. How much? Again, to taste. And again, nutmeg goes a long way, so you don't have to use a lot of it. Stir that in. Now, um, if you're gonna be using this bechamel sauce right away to make the mac and cheese, keep it warm until you're ready to use it. If you're not gonna be using it until the next day, put it in the fridge, bring it out, warm it up before you start putting together your mac and cheese. Okay, so let's taste it. Mm, it's good. I think it needs just a little bit more salt. So we're gonna add a little bit more salt. I don't think it needs any more pepper. We're gonna stir that up and taste it again. This is called adjusting seasoning. Mmm, perfect. Okay, now we need to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Next thing to do is to bring the pasta water to a boil. You need to have a big pot of water to do a whole pound of macaroni. And uh, you might notice that this water is a little frothy. That's because I steamed the lobster in some water in this pan. Then I added more water to it so we can cook the macaroni. Why did I do that? We're gonna have some of that lobster flavor and aroma helping to permeate the uh, uh, macaroni while it's cooking. So now we're gonna bring this to a boil. Okay, our water's come to a boil. Now we're gonna add the pasta, to the uh, macaroni to the water. I'm doing a full pound of this uh, macaroni. These are small macaroni elbows. This is the uh, DiCecco brand, elbow number 81. It's the small size. Now, this is probably gonna be more macaroni than you'll need, uh, but it won't hurt to have some leftovers. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know how big an appetite your date has, so we're gonna make uh, an adequate quantity to feed just about anybody. And we're gonna let that cook for about five minutes after it returns to a boil, uncovered. Okay, this has come back to a boil. It took about a minute to come back to a boil, but that will depend on your, um, your stove and your heat. We're gonna let this cook for five minutes and then we're gonna take it off and run it under cold water to stop the cooking. Okay, it's been five minutes. We're gonna run this under some cold water. Stop the cooking. Now you wanna drain the water out of it. And you just want to hold this aside till the next step. Now when you start, when you're ready to start mixing the um, cheeses with the macaroni, dip your macaroni back into that hot pasta water. Why are we doing that? To warm it up, which will help us to mix the cheeses in with the macaroni. You only need to leave it in there for a short time, and then 
we're going to take it out, shake out the extra water, pour it into the, the bowl that we're going to be using for mixing the cheeses. Okay, it's time to mix in the cheeses. We're going to use uh, the mascarpone cheese. Um, it's uh, mascarpone, actually. This is the, um, the Whole Foods brand. And we've got about eight, eight ounces of that. We have eight ounces of cheddar cheese. Eight ounces of shredded Gruyere cheese. We're going to put in about half of the chives that we chopped. It's about one tablespoon, but you can use more if you like. And enough of the bechamel that we made to kind of make this soupy. Now we're going to judge that as we go along. I made this bechamel the day before, put it in the fridge, and now I am uh, uh, brought it out to mix in. Let's add salt and pepper. You're gonna do that to taste. You can put some in to start with, not too much. You can always add it, can't take it away. And freshly ground black pepper. Mix it up. Add some more bechamel. I want it to be kind of soupy. Mm, let's add some more bechamel. Let's taste it. Good, but I'm going to add some more salt. And I can't see the pepper flex in there, so I'll add some more. And I think I'm going to add some more bechamel. What I made yesterday actually split up into two different containers. I'm just going to use it all. You may or may not use it all. It depends on a lot of factors. But I want it to be kind of soupy. Let's try it again. Perfect. You can just start to taste the salt. Now, now there's a lot of macaroni here. Now you have to judge how much you're going to serve for you and your date. And remember how much lobster meat you have. You have about one pound of lobster meat. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, if you don't think you're gonna eat this much, just take the amount that you think you're going to eat and mix that with the lobster. That way the lobster won't be diluted in as much macaroni. You'll have a much greater lobster concentration per the amount of macaroni that you're using. Now I figure I'm gonna need about half of this amount for me and my date, okay? So I'm gonna put that into the second, the second bowl. What do you do with the rest? Have it the next day. Have it for lunch. All right, now I think this is gonna be about amount and amount for two people. Uh, what would you serve with this? This is very rich. You know, I think I would just serve a salad with it. Now, this is uh, one pound of lobster tail meat. If you buy it already cooked, just cut it up into chunks that are about, oh, three quarters of an inch, something like that. Uh, fairly large chunks. If you buy it uncooked, a lobster tail, so four inch lobster tail, steam it for 15 minutes. Steam it for 15 minutes. Okay, now let's mix in our lobster meat. Now we're, we're going to do what's called folding it in. Folding is carefully 
raising the macaroni up over the lobster chunks. Why do we do that? So we don't break them up. We want to try to keep the chunks fairly intact. If the, if the pasta, or I should say if the macaroni is cold enough, cool enough, you could do this with your hands. Want to do that until it is well mixed and the lumps are still pretty intact. All right, next we're going to butter the uh, dishes in which we're going to um, bake this macaroni and cheese. Now, I'm using these little cast iron bowls. Uh, you just need to use something that's oven safe and that is the size of what you want to serve to your date. Butter it thoroughly including the rim. Okay, next we're gonna divide this up into the baking dishes. Again, if once you, once you fill these dishes, you think you have too much, don't use it all. You can freeze this, uh, the remaining uh, macaroni. Uh, you can use it at another time. You could have it for lunch. You could have it for dinner another day. Looks like I pulled out exactly the right amount for me and my date. Okay, now we're almost ready to bake these babies. We're gonna brush them with a little butter. Then grate some fresh, freshly grated Parmesan. Give it a nice covering on the top. And just a tiny little sprinkle of chili powder And then a slightly more generous sprinkling of paprika. And we're going to put this into the oven. Remember, we preheat it to 350 degrees and roast it until it's golden. Now, I think that's probably going to take about mm, 30 minutes. We're going to check it after 20 minutes. Okay, so now we don't need a whole lot to go with this lobster mac and cheese. It's a very rich dish. So you can make just a salad, or uh, I'm gonna make some asparagus. And um, you can do this while the um, mac and cheese is baking in the oven. I've got a big pot of boiling water. You wanna have a decent amount of water whenever you're, whenever you're blanching a vegetable. Put in about a handful of salt. I use uh, kosher salt, and then Drop your asparagus in, let them go for four minutes. Four, four minutes is pretty reliable for getting a asparagus that is um, uh, al dente, still slightly uh, crunchy. It's been four minutes, now we wanna plunge these asparagus into an ice bath. Why do we use the salt and why do we do the ice bath? The two things together help to set the color. Plunging them into the ice bath stops the cooking. And we're going to let them sit in this ice bath till we're sure they're cool, and then we're going to let them drain and dry out a bit. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. They're not as golden as I'd like them to be, so I'm going to put them in for another 15 minutes. All right, now this is the, garn the uh, lobster we're gonna use to garnish the tops of the, um, the mac and cheese. And these are from the claw, okay? And we're gonna pour a little bit of melted butter over them. And then a little salt, a little pepper. Toss them in the butter. Have the nice side uh, facing up, whichever side looks the best. Okay, now we're gonna warm them. 
And we're gonna warm those lobster, um, pieces of lobster for the garnish on, uh, you know, medium to low heat. And I'm gonna show you a little trick. Take a frying pan, flat bottom. Take a little metal plate that I had these lobsters on. Put that right down in the pan. Now, why would you do that? Because you might have already portioned how you're going to, um, uh, how you're gonna arrange and portion these pieces. And you might not wanna flip them around. You might wanna risk, not wanna risk damaging them. We're just warming them. So we're gonna warm them right here in this little pan. And when they're warm, we're gonna take that out and use it for serving. Okay, so the uh, butter is uh, bubbling in the, in the pan here. So I think these are nice and warm. We don't need to cook, cook them. It's already cooked, right? We're just warming them up. So we're gonna leave this in this pan until we're ready to plate up. I'm gonna turn the heat down to as low as it'll go. Okay, so we're gonna drop, now what we're gonna do is drop the asparagus back into the uh, water, which the, the heat is off. It can be on low, it doesn't matter. But we're just gonna warm them back up. Just, you know, maybe 30, 40 seconds to warm them back up. And we're gonna take them out and finish them for serving. It's time to plate our asparagus. We have five per person. These are fairly thin. If you had thicker ones, you could use fewer. If you had really thin ones, you could use more. Then we're gonna use a little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And then we're gonna drizzle just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Try to get the best balsamic vinegar that you can. The better it is, the thicker it is. Put your thumb over the end of the bottle and just let a couple of drops out at a time. Okay, there we have it. The um, asparagus is ready to serve. Okay, they're looking beautiful. And as you can see, they are bubbling hot. That was about uh, 35 minutes. It will vary with your oven. Now we want to garnish with the lobster tails. I mean, lo I'm sorry, lobster claw meat. Pour that extra little bit of butter from the warming pan. Garnish with chives. This is the other half of the chives that we didn't use in the uh, mixture earlier. There you go, ready to serve. Okay, here's the finished dish. This is the lobster mac and cheese. We're gonna serve it with that asparagus that I showed you earlier. You can see photos of the final dish at my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great date.